Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking at a 1997 Mazda Bongo Friendy. Not friendly, friendy. Sort of like put a Y on the end and make friend into an adverb, even though it's not proper English. This one here has 71,000 kilometers on it. We'll check the auction inspection sheet and compare it to the vehicle's condition. It is a grade three vehicle. It does have some issues, namely a whole lot of damage right here, which I'll show you more details in a second. But let's switch the engine off here. Have a little listen. Okay, so that's a 2.5 liter turbo diesel engine. You can also get this in gasoline engine. They come in four wheel drive or two wheel drive, and this one is a four wheel drive version. I must say the four wheel drive on this is more capable than you would think that it is. I'm not sure if they use limited slip differentials front and rear, but we do have troubles getting up this slippery gravel in a lot of cars, even four wheel drive cars. The Mazda is like a little goat and just climbs right up. We also haven't had any serious problems with any of these Bongo Friendies. And here's something interesting. These are actually uh, sold as a Ford as well. So you can get a Ford, I think it's called a Ford Bongo still. No, Ford Free, I don't know. It's not the Aero Star or the Free Star, but I don't know. It's not coming to my mind right now. The Ford one is still available here in Japan. Uh, obviously you saw the pop-up top. It comes with pop-up top or non-pop-up top, but they are pretty easy to find still with the pop-up top and they basically are not really a camper but can sleep up here and can sleep down here with all of these uh the benches fold flat into a sleepable platform okay let's go over the auction inspection sheet 97 mazda bongo friendy this is our rfv um auto free top and it's fully electronic and from what I've seen military doing training uh, from what I what was I going to say from what I've seen there haven't been major problems with the tent ripping or the free top section breaking I have seen a few of the latter these dampers can go saggy after a while and make it harder for the motor to pr prop the top up and then the top is made out of fiberglass I have seen some broken fiberglass up there maybe they tried to get into a parking that is too small and, or too short and just ruined their free top it's a shame you got to be careful of this because the diesel and the gasoline are both the same engine size at 2.5 liters it seems like they're about 50 50 of how many were sold in each fueling uh, version. Okay, so auction grade three, interior B, 71, 770, 727 kilometers, automatic transmission. Purchase from user is the only sales point. It's original silver two tone paint. The report here says aftermarket wheels. Exterior is not glossy. There actually is some fade in a number of places. I'll show you in a second. Underside surface rust, very small scratches, small dents, and interior is dirty. And yes, it is. And it kind of smells a little bit dirty. Not like cigarettes, it's only like a two out of 10 in terms of stinkiness, but it does smell like a dirty old car. Uh, two out of 10 dirty old car. So not that dirty or old, but it is old. It's 25 years old. Anyway, uh, auction, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think here. A2 on the front bumper is pretty severe. That's some medium scratches. Uh, fade right here, rock chip. AU3, that's large damage right there. It's pretty severe. Okay, and then AU2 on the back. I'll show you that right after we do a walk around here. Okay, so it is roughly about step wagon size. What else is step wagon size? Nothing in North America. These are kind of a smaller minivan. When you uh, compare it to North American style ones, that's where this one is going. Uh, I must say that... Uh, it is quite a nice size and shape. Maybe about the same size as an old caravan, like the first generation Dodge Caravan. Maybe a little bit taller. You also sit on top of the engine on this, so it gives you a really nice seating position for good visibility all the way around, which is kind of important because this is a right-hand drive vehicle that's going to be driving around in the left-hand drive market in the States. So the higher up you are, the more visible everything else is. It makes it easier to drive. 
Here in Japan, you can drive both left-hand and right-hand drive, and it's pretty common. You see uh, left-hand drive cars on the road basically every day. Okay, you can see that damage there a little bit better. We'll just continue coming back around before I point out any of the defects. Okay, so let's talk about the bad things on this one. And I know it is kind of sad to talk about the bad things, but here we go. The hood fade basically needs to be repainted. Not only that, but the grill is also faded. Okay, the headlights are yellow, which is kind of weird because the marker lights, I guess, don't turn yellow like the headlights do on this car. Same thing with Delicas, uh, Mitsubishi Delicas. Front bumper, they said A2, so there's some scuffs there. There's a really large one here. There's another one underneath here. Right there. Okay, some rock chips that have been painted with a touch-up paint. There's still a bolt in there, and it looks like it's been there in there for a long time. There's a bit of surface rust inside there. Underside's looking pretty good on this one. Uh, I didn't really see any issues. More scuff there. A bump here it has touch-up paint, so basically the hood and the bumper and the grill could probably use some new paint. Uh, the paint code is written on the auction sheet in case you want it, 19N. Okay, there's a little bit of a scuff on the mirror here. The side decal is basically cracked in a lot of places. I'm just going to show you here and then you can assume that it's most of the stickers. Coming down this side, it's looking really good all except for some paint damage caused from the running water over certain areas. Like the water accumulates on the mirror and then runs down right here. And the water in Japan, the rainwater, is nasty. And it'll damage your paint if you're not careful. And unfortunately, a lot of minivan drivers aren't going to polish their car because it costs a lot to do it. And usually only like German car owners or sports car drivers are really caring that much about the paint condition. I think this is the same worldwide, it's not just a Japan thing. Okay, so the car is dirty right now, my apologies for that. I would absolutely love to have the ability to clean these cars beforehand, but as you can see, we are constantly, constantly busy. And uh, we also don't have a hose. So, yeah, down this side, all is looking good. There's uh, extra reflectors put on here. I don't know why. It says auto free top on the side. Okay, I think this side, yeah. We got a scuff that comes from like basically here to here. It's kind of a low level scuff, but it is large. Like it's not very deep, but it takes up a lot of real estate. And then here, a big amount of damage right there. And if you look in here, let me just open the door so that you can see it. There are these spots here where the paint cracked and they didn't put a touch up paint. So they've started to get a bit of rust there. Okay, so basically a body shop needs to come and repair this side. It is giant damage. But of course we knew about that on the auction sheet. This is all pushed in like one or two centimeters pushed in. Okay, so let's go to the interior of that thing. We'll start off with the trunk. Uh, both rows of seats, this is a three row of course, both rows of seats can be moved forward or backward on rails. And so you can choose where your leg room exists. Coming in here, it is dirty, especially these side pieces here are dirty. I don't know how you get these this dirty. Okay, and yeah, this can fold flat down to be uh, between the two rows to make a sleeping platform, which is quite nice. You get a little place to put some things. Mm -hmm. It says you have to lock the tray into place before you drive. Okay, and the seat right now is in the full forward position. So this is your max cargo room in this van. Unless you wanted to fold this seat, you can also fold it this way and you can stack stuff on top of it. The back of this seat here has little trays that when you fold these ones down, 
it becomes completely horizontal. So you can use them for eating if you needed to. Okay. On to this part of the interior. Okay, pretty standard issue looking stuff. You get another tray underneath this one. They love those trays. And you get foot rests that can fold down. These are kind of nice. You can fold it down and it clicks into a completely horizontal position, or you can push it more to be a tilted position. It has a little bit of resistance, but those are the only two actual settings. If you put it halfway, then your foot weight will push it down. But it clicks in there, so you can actually keep feet on it. Okay. All of the blinds are electronic. I didn't test them, but maybe I should. I pulled the key out. Reach for the key. Okay. And I think there are, where are the buttons for that? Is that not on? Okay, doesn't work. Do the individual ones work? Yeah, they do. So there's a button to open and close all of them at the same time. That button seems, or that switch seems to not work. But that one works. This one works. Ow. That one works. And then there's one here for the window, for the sliding door one. Okay. Getting into, oh, let me just shut the engine off. Reach for the key. Okay, to get into the back seat, maybe a little bit an, uh, annoying. Maybe not that annoying. <laughs> Plenty of space. Okay. The reason why I think these are annoying is because you have to go like this when you put it back in. Ah. Maybe I'm just being picky. There you go. And then, yes, when this is in the full back position, that's leg room for days. I'm going to put this seat thing down. Actually, it's not leg room for days, is it? Leg room for mm, eight hours? I don't know. Easy to get through. This one here is push up. And then you can hop up into here. You get a sunroof in here, which is open and closable. I'm going to leave it open so you can see. There is a vent system there. Kind of weird. And then it looks like a cleaning of this fabric would be nice. But this unzips here and then leaves this part here non-see-through and then all of this see-through. But if you're sleeping in it, nobody from outside will be able to see you. This whole thing rolls up and then attaches onto some tags, like right here, there, there, and there. There's four of them. You can also vent a little bit here. And this one doesn't open. This foam is probably about two centimeters thick and it's a light foam, so you probably want another foam pad. But this is the OEM one that covers the entire surface up here. I think these are aftermarket free top cup holder. At least a dealer option. It is a Mazda authentic item. Interesting. Okay, let's hide it down in here. Close the top. Okay, here's the front. And like I said, you sit up nice and high in this one gives you a really good view. Okay. Should mention here a little bit of scratches with rust. Reach for the key again. Bongo Friendi. It's fun to say, isn't it? Okay, driver's seat and passenger seat are in generally good condition. There is a little bit of deterioration in the driver's seat. It kind of looks like a cigarette burn, but I don't think it is. 
And the interior doesn't smell like cigarettes in this one. See, it looks like bits of the fabric that have come out. Okay. Floor mats look a bit dirty. Power folding mirrors. Fog lights. A mystery switch. Okay, and this person put steering wheel cover on. One of my pet peeves for a vehicle. I don't like those at all. And then a cover here and a cover here. The plus side is that everything underneath should be in decent condition. If it was, if they're the kind of person who puts a steering wheel cover on and a shifter cover and an e-brake cover, probably they didn't put the steering wheel cover on as a way to fix an otherwise gross and decrepit steering wheel. This was just for style purposes and to maintain a good condition wheel. It looks fine underneath with a little bit of wear at the corners here. Okay, only 71,000 kilometers, which is remarkable for a 25 year old vehicle. Comes with a really old navigation unit. Look at that. Wow. And then some fake wood stickers that I guess you could buy that are pre cut out to the appropriate size for this car. Kind of interesting. Okay, there's a couple of things down there, like uh, things used to be stuck on. Oh! Oh, my bad. Here are the buttons for the uh, curtains behind. What's this one for? Oh, open and close the top. Ah, okay. No problem. Oh, and uh, both of these have broken on both sides. I took pictures of it for the owner, but I guess it kind of seems like a very easy to break part. Okay. End of the video. We're at 16 minutes, nearly 17, a good time to stop. So if anyone has any questions, please, please feel free to post those in the comment section, or you can reach out to us by email. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.